anime can be really bad at romance. Anime can be amazing at romance as well, but I feel like more often than not, it's pretty bad at it. But since Valentine's Day is coming up, and in fact we might be uploading just in time for it, I want to return to a series that I've talked about before because... Because crap damn it, today we're going to talk about why Fate Unlimited Blade Works is the most romantic Fate anime. When it comes to action anime, the Fate series can be pretty romantic. Okay, that one's not my cup of tea. Ooh, definitely not that one. And that time I just bet on the wrong horse. But I want to take this opportunity to talk about the epilogue to Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, because I honestly feel that it's one of, if not the most romantic things in the entire Fate series. I think I covered this in my previous video, but if you don't know, Fate Stay Night was originally a visual novel before it became an anime. The game follows Shiro Emiya, a suicidally idealistic teenager who is forced into a wizard death battle called a Holy Grail War. In this Grail War, wizards summon historical and mythological figures to fight for them. The original visual novel has three distinct story routes each of which has been adapted by one anime studio or another. The first route, Fate, was very loosely, some might argue rather poorly, adapted in the 2006 TV anime, and that one is mainly about romancing Saber. My beloved Unlimited Blade Works route was adapted not just by Studio Dean in a movie, but in a full TV series that we're talking about today, by Ufotable. And that one is about romancing Rin Tosaka. Last but not least, the Heaven's Feel route, which is also being adapted by Ufotable, is about slowly destroying your soul on the inside. Also, it's about romancing Sakura. See, when I talk to some Fate fans, they tell me that they don't like Unlimited Blade Works because they don't feel like it's really Rin's arc. They think it's more Archer's. And I can kind of see where they're coming from in this. I mean, let's face it. In the case of the Fate Route, you have Shiro trying to help Saber overcome the overwhelming violence and trauma that she feels from, you know, being King Arthur. And then in the case of Heaven's Feel... You have Shiro not just confronting his own survivor's guilt, a background pain for him in every route, but also confronting Sakura's unimaginable trauma. But that big emotional climax for Unlimited Blade Works isn't really between Shiro and Tosaka. Instead, it's between Shiro and the materialization of his own self-doubt and self-hate in the form of his future self. So yes... Archer. So in a way, Unlimited Blade Works is very unique. It's not about Shiro fixing his love interest's emotional issues, it's about him confronting his own. And in a lot of ways, I think that that's a healthier approach to storytelling. Now, granted, I'm just coming at this from my own perspective, but I've been married for a few years, so I like to think that I have some insight into this sort of thing. If you're in a relationship to fix someone else, you're not in a relationship for healthy reasons. Now, of course, this is high drama. This is anime. It doesn't need to be realistic. I mean, if it did, that would basically throw the heroic spirits concept completely out the window. But at the same time, I do think it's important to think about what act a good relationship actually looks like. It can't just be about fixing the other person, partly because, well, Shiro's 17 years old. He's definitely not a psychologist. It's not what he's equipped to do. But on the other hand, when I look at his dynamic with Tosaka, it's so much more give and take. Shiro is, like I said before, 
sometimes suicidally idealistic. And Rin is very pragmatic, but in ways that aren't always good for her own emotional well-being. They course correct each other. When one is going too far one way, the other pu pulls them back. It's finding a happy middle ground, and it's really relatable and kind of cute. You have to admit, there is something kind of charming about Philip J. Fry with swords and his healthy dynamic with the honor student. Yeah, Rin is the brains of the group, but Chiro's the heart, and you kind of need both in order for things to function well. I think another thing that really speaks to people, though, and I get it, because it's absolutely a valid and exciting thing, are big romantic gestures. And I'll be the first to admit, Unlimited Blade Works doesn't match the other two for that. Be it summoning a sword at the power of love, or a heartfelt confession in the rain, expressing love no matter what obstacles might be in the way, it's hard to deny that this isn't really powerful, and that I might have been heard crying in a certain movie theater when I saw that scene. But I think there's something to be said also for quiet scenes. For just talking about your feelings with the person you care about. For getting that off your chest and sharing affection underneath the stars. I think that subtlety is really beautiful. And I think that's why I like the epilogue episode of the TV series so much. And I think that's the meat of what I want to talk about today. The final episode of Unlimited Blade Works is literally titled Epilogue. I know, it's a little on the nose, but uh, we'll get there. Set two years after the final battle that I praised so hard in the previous video... This episode follows Shiro and Rin at magic school in London. They're no longer fighting heroic spirits or facing some unconscionable evil, but they're still together. They're spending their regular days together. Rin in way more intense magical training, and Shiro also taking some classes while being emotional support for her as she enters a much more intense stage of her magical training. The two of them just eat meals together, support each other even though stress levels are still insanely high, and bid a fond farewell to a beloved friend. It's quiet, and it's subtle, but there's something kind of beautiful about it. Even after all this time, even without the intensity of something terrible like the end of the world or defeating the first hero in all human history hanging over them, there's still so much love there. And that really speaks to me. During this whole sequence, Shiro is very worried about whether or not he can even stay in London. They've offered both him and Tosaka some pretty cushy jobs if they can graduate school, and after being in a weird esoteric ritual, you can't blame him for thinking that that sounds kind of promising. But that hero complex that he continues to have drives him forward, and he's not sure if he could settle for something like that. And in the last moments of the episode, he tells Tosaka just this. And instead of scolding him, or arguing, she's come to terms with it because deep down she kind of knew where his morals were. Rin instead agrees to follow Shiro to whatever he may go because she's also seen the dark side of what he might become and she quite possibly rightfully thinks there's a way to avoid that. But if they're going to do it, they have to do it together. And like I said, I just think that's kind of beautiful. Getting old together, enjoying each other's company, just smiling with someone else as the sun goes down. To me, 
It's about as romantic as it gets. If you enjoyed this video, and I certainly hope you did because I had to do some kind of crazy reshoots for it, please consider liking the video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to my channel. If you really want to throw some financial support my way, I've got a Patreon at patreon.com slash Nikizumi. All of these episodes of the Nikizumi, or in some cases, I guess the Celestizumi, well, whatever you call it, all of these episodes are part of the Nerd and Tie podcast network. You can find us at nerdandtie.com. Follow Nerd and Tie for true crime, witchcraft, and general nerddom podcasts, along with some really fun actual play shows. I think you'll enjoy it if you give it a shot. Take care of yourselves. Happy Valentine's Day. And as always, keep on spockin' in the free world.